How's it going fellow creators? Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to create a cinematic video using your smartphone, in this case, an iPhone 8 Plus, from start to finish, all the way from filming to editing. But before I get into it, here is the final video I shot using only my 8 Plus with no accessories. Yes, I'm a little bit sick right now, a little bit under the weather with like a cold. It's just been a long week, really busy. I think I got kind of sick because of that, but because you guys are so amazing, I've been getting so much awesome feedback on this channel, I had to make a video, and I really want to share this topic with you guys, so here we go. I'm gonna break this video up into two main sections, the shooting part and then the editing part. So without further ado, let's get started with the shooting. I've got four main tips when it comes to shooting cinematic videos with your smartphone, my iPhone. Tip number one is to get super creative with your angles, really focus on nailing that composition. Because we're shooting on this one lens, no attachments or anything, we only have one focal length, but you know what, that's totally fine because even the top level pros using the most expensive lenses choose to to shoot on prime lenses which is just one set focal length so you're not really at a disadvantage there. One way I really like to get creative with shots is to use foreground to give your shots depth. So shoot through things, underneath things, sliding out from things. Really just use what you have available around you to make the shot as creative and unique as possible. My second tip to shooting cinematic footage with your iPhone is to use slow motion to make your footage more stable and just to look more cinematic. My iPhone 8 Plus shoots 4K 60 FPS video, which is absolutely insane. Even Sony's $2,000 A7 Mark III can't even do that. And it'll shoot all the way up to 240 frames slow-mo in full 1080 HD. Even if you don't own the iPhone 8 Plus in particular, I think most phone cameras in 2019 have similar video specs. So slow motion footage equals more stable footage, which equals less micro jitters, which equals more professional and more cinematic. If at this point in the video you've learned something, you're enjoying what you're watching, I'd love it if you would consider hitting that subscribe button. Yes, it makes a difference. I wanna be able to continue to make these videos on an even bigger and better scale for you guys. So that's that. Tip number three is to use movement in your videos as much as you can when you're shooting on your smartphone to keep things cinematic and interesting. This is one of my personal favorite methods in shooting cinematic footage, whether it's on my phone or on my professional DSLR. Some examples of cinematic movement that I like to use is a slow left to right or right to left. When you're doing this, just try to make sure you hold your phone as steady as possible. I will be adding a little bit of stabilization in the editing to some of these clips, but it makes your life a whole lot easier if you can get your clips as smooth as possible straight out of the camera. Another cinematic move I like to do is a push in or a pull out. Again, make sure you're moving slowly and you're trying to hold the camera steady. And my last tip when it comes to shooting cinematic footage on your smartphone is to stick to the basics. Don't forget that whether it's a full video or just a little cinematic sequence, you need to have a story. Some sort of beginning, middle, and end, or else your footage and your viewers will just be bored and boring. It doesn't have to be some extravagant story with voiceover and script and all that. As you can see in my little dirt biking video I made, I have shots in the beginning, loading up the dirt bikes, loading up the truck, getting there, unloading the dirt bikes, getting ready for the ride, kind of that climax, and then the riding shots are sort of the climax, and then you can see at the end of the video, just kind of winding down, things fading out, the sun is starting to set. If you can master those four areas when you're shooting video with your iPhone, I can guarantee you some awesome cinematic videos and your content's just gonna be golden. So at this point, I'm gonna shift over to the editing room because that's all I have to say in terms of shooting and it's getting pretty hot out here. All right, so you've shot some amazing cinematic footage using your smartphone, but you're not quite sure how to edit it. Right now, I'm gonna be giving you four tips on how to spice this cinematic footage up and really make it come to life. So let's get into it. The first thing that I do when I'm creating a cinematic sequence from the footage that I shot is I add cinema bars or a letterbox. So I'm gonna go and search in Final Cut Pro for the letterbox. Oh, it's not a transition. It's over here, letterbox. 
and then I'm gonna go and put it on top of an adjustment layer that I will link below this video in the description that you can download. Adjustment layers are super clutch and you're gonna use it for your letterbox and later for your color grading once you get into that. So I'm gonna throw the letterbox on top of our footage here on the adjustment layer. I'm gonna rename that to, um, I'm gonna call it cinema bars. Don't know if that's the correct terminology or not. I'm gonna set it to 235 to one, which is kind of the classic cinematic ratio. As you can see, you're already looking more cinematic. Easy as that. So that is typically the first thing I do. I'm not gonna go through and edit this entire sequence because that would take forever and we only have limited time here and I don't wanna bore you and keep you here forever. So I'm just gonna work with these first few clips here. So we have our cinema bars. That is tip number one to do that's gonna already make your footage look cinematic. Um, you can see if you put it next to, for example, let's see, now like a vlog clip. I'm talking to the camera here and then I have my cinematic sequence. So then tip number two is to play around with speed ramps. If you shot a lot of this in slow motion to get that really smooth footage, well, there you go, slow. You don't want the whole thing to be slower, that's just gonna be boring. So you wanna see that? That was a little speed ramp there. So how I would do that is I would go to blade speed, which I've already done on the clip, so it's gonna show up, there you go. Here's your slow motion footage you've shot, and then you would make this like a thousand percent or something. So boom, thousand percent. And then on the next one, that last little bit, I would again, blade speed, but I've already done it. As you can see, 800%, just that very first of the clip and then slow again. So it goes from slow to fast to slow and it makes a nice transition. So as I'm, and then you can see I did it again there. Quick, fast, slow. So I really like incorporating this into my cinematic sequences. Tip number three and probably the most important tip is color correction and color grading. So to do this again, I'm gonna add another adjustment layer, whoops. Underneath those cinema bars, color grade. There's a difference between color grading and color correction. I'll probably go into that into a different video, but basically the color grade is like that stylized cinematic look. And then the color correction is just simply fixing your exposure and stuff like that. I'm gonna search custom LUT and I'm gonna apply my S-Log LUT that I use for a lot of my footage. Now I did not shoot this iPhone footage in S-Log, so I'm gonna tone this way back. Actually, I think it might be this one. There we go, it's this one. It's kind of an orange and teal LUT that I've made. Obviously, this looks completely terrible. Like I said, I didn't shoot in S-Log, which is how I designed this LUT, so I'm just gonna add only a little bit. So this would be 100%. This is like looking good right about here, maybe 37, 36%. So here's the difference already. So that footage is looking much more cinematic. And then to do a quick color correction, I would play with my exposure, turn that up a little bit. Again, I'm not gonna go into this, but now the colors look much better. And my fourth and last tip when it comes to editing your cinematic footage is to add a little bit of stabilization where you might need it because smartphones are definitely not the most stable. So let's take this clip for example. You're gonna scroll down, click the clip, highlight it, super easy, and then just click stabilization. You can control how much stabilization you want right here, um, but I just, for the most part, leave it at the standard one. So it's already a lot more stable than it was before. Again, it just kinda adds an extra little touch. I'll go through all my clips and do all four of these things in that order and then eventually I'll have a banger little cinematic sequence that I shot 100% on my smartphone. All right, at this point in the video, I'm gonna ask you to hit that like button. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, consider hitting that subscribe button because this is just the beginning of this channel. I've already felt so much love from all of you. I have so much up here that I wanna put on the camera and on YouTube that I can teach you, grow this community so we can all learn and grow as creators together. I'll also link a video up here about my three main struggles as a creator. They're things that pretty much every creator has faced that I've ever talked to. And I just talk about how I overcome those. So if you're feeling discouraged, well, hopefully you're feeling a little bit more inspired after watching this video, then you can go there, click that, and you'll be ready to go. Oh, and uh, 
Seth Pacer, I'm not, not sure if that's how you pronounce his last name. He won the A73 giveaway, all that gear. Congrats to him. Uh, go to his Instagram, I'll put it here and show him some love. He's really excited and I'm really excited for him. So yeah, just go show him some love. Congrats again, Seth. All right, I'm gonna stop talking now. See you in the next one. Peace.